In this video, I will show you the equation derivation of energy stored in an inductor. At first, I will use the concept of energy stored in an inductor using a simple RL circuit like this. After that, I will go through the detailed derivation of the equation of energy of an inductor. Now, let me show you how does an inductor store energy and how does it release that stored energy to show you that let's say i have this simple rl circuit this circuit contains two resistors 10 ohm and this 10 ohm and an inductor 30.65 henrys and a switch and we are supplying the circuit with a voltage source of 9 volt okay now see if i close this switch that means i am allowing the current through the circuit therefore you will see the current will be flowing in this circuit okay now let me show you the initial value of current through this 10 ohm and this inductor see the initial value of current through the inductor will be very small here it is only 0 0.06 ampere and here it is only 0 0.42 ampere now if i run the simulation you will see gradually the current through this inductor will increase and the current through this resistor will decrease and the value of current see as the current through the inductor let's say the current through the inductor is i see as the current through the inductor is changing with time therefore i can say di by dt the current changes through the inductor with respect to time is not equal to zero here you will see gradually the amount of current changing through the inductor will be very small see it is increasing very slowly okay and after a while you will see it will be fixed at a constant level here it should be 0 0.9 amps See now this current is only 0 0.9 ampere. When the current will be 0 0.9 ampere, you will see the current through this resistor of 10 ohm will be equal to 0. And here you will see the voltage drop across our inductor. See it is nearly 0 volt. Now my question is that what makes the initial current through the inductor nearly zero? See the initial current through the inductor is nearly zero and gradually it is increasing with time. Now what makes the current through the inductor equal to zero? See when we allow the current to pass through the inductor if we get the change of current with respect to time that means if di of dt is not equal to zero you will see there will be a voltage which we will denote with vl a voltage vl will be induced in the inductor and we calculate vl equal to l di by dt we will get a voltage vl across the inductor which will oppose the main supply voltage because of which you will see there will be almost no current therefore you will see initially the current will be nearly zero and gradually the current will be increasing towards a constant value of 0 0.9 ampere and when the current will be equal to 0 0.9 ampere constant you will see the voltage VL will be equal to zero because with respect to time there will be no change of current so th in that case this inductor will act like a short circuit in case of this inductor as long as this di by dt will not be equal to zero we will get a voltage across this inductor and the emf of that voltage will oppose the main supply voltage that means see this main supply voltage will try to conduct the current in this direction through this inductor so the positive terminal and the negative terminal of this vl should be in a way so that it can oppose the 
direction of current flow so the positive terminal of this VL will be at this side and the negative terminal of this VL will be at this side see when this positive terminal will be at this side and negative terminal will be at this side you will see it will try to conduct the current in opposite direction therefore the resultant current will be the subtraction of the source current minus this VL current therefore initially the current I was equal to zero because in that case the induced voltage VL and the supply voltage let's say E across this inductor are equal okay now see the current through this inductor is 0 0.9 ampere what will happen if I disconnect the source from the circuit by disconnecting this switch you will see this voltage VL will flow the electrons in this direction as a result we will get the current I flowing in this direction after disconnecting this switch see as I have disconnected this switch our electrons are moving in this direction as a result we will get the current flow in the opposite direction of electrons see electrons are moving in this direction therefore I will get the current in this direction see the current is gradually decreasing to zero that means this inductor is releasing its energy now my question is how the inductor causes the electrons to move in this direction or current flow in this direction when I have disconnected this source from the circuit when I have allowed the current flowing through this inductor it stores some energy upon disconnecting this switch or upon disconnecting this source from the circuit this inductor dissipates that energy by moving the electrons in this direction or by allowing a current flow in this direction so I can say that if I connect an inductor in a circuit it will store some energy within it after disconnecting the source it will dissipate that energy if the inductor gets a suitable path to dissipate that energy an inductor stores electrical energy or electrical current in the form of magnetic energy that means if I connect this switch here the current that is flowing through the inductor will be stored in the form of magnetic energy and when I will disconnect this switch this inductor will release this magnetic energy by allowing the electrons flow in this circuit or by allowing the current flow in this circuit so I can say that the inductor stores some energy if the source gets disconnected from the circuit now I will show you the equation of stored energy in an inductor okay I will show you derivation now see this is the circuit I have shown you in the simulator if I close the switch let's say the current flowing through the inductor is I as the current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously therefore it will increase linearly with time therefore di by dt will not be equal to zero so I will get an opposing voltage that will be developed across the inductor which will be VL and the voltage across the inductor VL is given by L into di by dt now see the power absorbed by the inductor will be equal to P which is the multiplication of voltage across inductor and the current through the inductor so here VL will be equal to L into DI DDT of DI into I so here I will get L I DDT of DI we define the power as the rate at which energy changes from one form to another and in case of an inductor the electrical current will be stored in the form of magnetic field or in the form of magnetic energy therefore I can say in case of this inductor 
the power is the rate at which the electrical energy changes from electrical energy to the magnetic energy so i can write down the equation of power p equal to dw by dt or d dt of w see if i take the dw in the left side i will get dw equal to p d t now see if i integrate both sides with respect to time i will get our energy stored in an inductor that means integration of dw from the interval 0 to t will be equal to w and this w is the energy stored in the inductor and that will be equal to the integration of right side with within 0 to t time interval see from this equation we get p equal to l i d i of d d t of d i so here i can write integration of 0 to t l i d d t of d i okay see here this dt and this dt will get cancelled therefore in the integration we will get the l i d i see here previously our integration operator was time but here our integration operator is i therefore the limit of the integration will also change let's say when the t equal to 0 the current i equal to 0 and when the time equal to t the current that is flowing through the inductor is i therefore i can integrate the l i d i l i d i within 0 to i time interval okay see this is our l and in case of an inductor inductance is constant so i can write it like this integration of i d i within 0 to i interval see here if i perform integration i will get l i square by 2 with lower limit 0 upper limit i here i will get half l i square minus 0 so our energy is stored in an inductor w will be equal to half l i square okay and you will see the energy that will be stored in the inductor will be dependent on the current now let me make some conclusion number one here our stored energy equal to half l i square and here see there is no voltage term therefore if i get a finite amount of current flowing through the inductor our inductor will store finite amount of energy within it or it will convert that finite current into a finite magnetic energy although the voltage across that inductor vl equal to zero this is the case when our i will be equal to 0 0.9 ampere in case of the given circuit and because of which di of dt will be equal to zero and at that time vl will be equal to zero volt see we will get finite current but the voltage across the inductor will be zero therefore i will get the energy in stored in that inductor will be equal to half l i square 30.68 into 0 0.9 square current flow electrical energy stored in the form of magnetic field in that inductor number two is that while showing you the simulation i have shown you that our inductor will store energy within it it will not dissipate energy therefore our inductor will be known as a reactive element reactive element stores energy and reactive elements release that energy if the reactive element gets a suitable medium to release that energy therefore our inductor is known as 
non dissipative passive element 